to Call Conversations. I'm Marvin Fausto, President of COL Investment Management. This webinar series brings you closer to the leaders of different businesses and known experts in markets and investing. Today, I am pleased to invite you in this conversation with Keepers, the leading distributor of famous imported spirits like Alfonso, Johnny Walker, Jose Cuervo, and many more. We will have a conversation with the senior executives of Keepers about their latest 4.5 billion follow-on offering and their strategy in how they are recovering from the pandemic and how they are planning to grow their business for the coming years. Let's start this conversation. Joining us today to give short presentation about the Keepers Holdings. Uh, joining us to speak, no other than the president, the Keepers Holdings, Jose Paulino Santa Marina, or JP. Prior to joining the group, he was the chief financial officer of CMG Marketing, a subsidiary of United Distillers, now known as Diageo. JP was Keepers employee number one, but he has been in the industry for more than 30 years and has been with this group for about 25 years. So, major experience that in JP. Also with us today is Ms. Imelda Lakap, controller of the Keepers Holdings. She started her career with SGV and company before moving to Pure Gold as audit officer and has been with the liquor group for 15 years. So without further ado, let us all welcome the Keepers Holdings Inc. for their presentation. All right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Fausto, for the very generous introduction. Thank you, okay, for the retail investors of Gold Financial for uh, no, uh, giving us the opportunity to present our business to you this afternoon. Marami salamat po. Um, we have an exciting presentation prepared for you today, showing how recovery is well underway in spite of the continuing effects of the perennial lockdown. But before we go into details, allow me to recap the group's story. The Keepers Holdings started when Mr. Lucio Co, through the Costco Group, diversified into the distribution of imported alcoholic beverage from his core retailing business. <clears throat> Keepers is the holding company to three major players in the Philippines spirit, wine, and specialty beverage industry. Montosco, Meritus, and Premier. Collectively, the Keepers Holdings is by far the largest distributor of imported spirits in the Philippines with a market share of 74% based on volume and 66.9% based on retail sales value. The strongest synergy that we derive from Costco Group is through our affiliates Pure Gold and SNR. We have benefited and will continue to benefit from their vast nationwide network of 438 stores. Finally, we are pleased to inform you that our net sales increased to 4.3 billion for the first six months of 2021, or 34.8% higher compared to the same period last year. Net income at 700 million or 74.5% higher than last year. Uh, thanks to the strong rebound of the sales volume of our brandy category, which has surpassed its pre-pandemic uh, performance. Next slide, please. Jan, this is how the Costco Group looks now. As you are aware, the Keepers Holdings, formerly the Binchi Capital Holdings, is now a holding company fully owning the liquor distribution businesses of the Costco Capital Group. In this section, Allow me to share with you six key investment highlights that we believe makes Keepers an interesting value proposition for you. Number one, we hold the leading market position in the imported spirits distribution segment in the Philippines. Our leadership extends to all relevant categories of the imported spirits segment. From our anchor category, Alfonso is number one in brandy, to blended scotch whiskey, Johnny Walker is number one. Practically, all spirit categories are brands dominate. 
As mentioned, we hold a market share of 74% based on volume and around 67% based on retail sales value of the imported spirits market. Amid this backdrop, we continuously assess We continuously assess and fine-tune our product portfolio, almost all of which are under exclusive distribution arrangements. In this table, only Jinro, the Korean brand, is non-exclusive but only because the Koreans here only want to buy from Koreans too. Number three, we are well positioned to capture the premiumization consumer trend in the Philippines. This is evident in these charts that show that consumers are graduating to higher quality products that are priced above the 100 peso per bottle threshold, such that this segment will be worth 50 billion by 2025. The reasons for this trend include the natural affinity of Filipinos for imported products, making it is signaled by being able to afford products of higher quality. This is enabled by their rising incomes, the OFW families, young people moving to cities and starting to earn, etc. Number four, we have an extensive and long-standing relationships with brand owners who are global market leaders. Our success in growing the imported spirits market in the Philippines allowed us to enjoy long-standing partnerships with global brand owners some spanning over two decades like Williams and Humbert, the producers of uh, our own Alfonso. And we also active, actively cultivate new relationships. As you can see here, we're enlisting the likes of Red Bull Energy Drink and Height Jinro on board. So may alak na, may energy drink pa. Number five, we have an experienced management team with extensive knowledge in brand building, marketing, and distribution of spirits, wines, and specialty beverages. The team is led, of course, by Mr. Lucio Ko, the visionary who started it all. We have a cumulative experience of well over a century in distribution, brand building, and retailing. Our capable team undoubtedly are equipped to execute the group's business strategies. And number six, the last point, we have a strategic and sustainable expansion plan complemented by our synergistic relationship with the Costco Group. At the onset, we have a natural synergy with, the Pure Gold, with Pure Gold and SNR as they provide us with a ready nationwide distribution network with their 438 stores combined. The growth of our relationship is bound to only increase here on as Pure Gold plans to roll out 25 additional new stores per year where SNR is targeting to open two new stores per year. Our network of around 200 sub-distribution partners, which account for around 70% of our sales, further extend our reach ac across all fringes of the Philippine archipelago. Shown here are the company's products as displayed at the most lucrative point of sale displays in Pure Gold and in SNR. In summary, we are by far the largest player in the distribution of imported spirits a segment that is growing rapidly on the back of the premiumization of the industry. With decades of relationships with brand owners, the proven capabilities and vision of our management, and the synergies with the wider Costco group, we believe we are bound to capture the industry's growth and more. I will now give the floor to Ate Eme, our beautiful controller, to walk you through our financial results up to the first half of this year, 2021. Ate Eme, take it away. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. So good. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, I'm Emel de la Cap, And I will be presenting to you the financial highlights of the group based on the pro forma consolidated financial statements included in the prospectus. These are for the years ended December 31, 2018, 2019, and 2020. And for the consolidated interim financial statements for the first half of 2021 and 2020. Our external auditors, RG Manabat and Company, performed assurance procedures on this um, financial uh, on these statements in accordance with the Philippine standards on assurance engagement. So on the screen presented are the results of operations, highlighting the net sales the gross profit, the operating income, and the net profit. So in 
2019, uh, we hit the 10 billion sales milestone, primarily on the back of our brandy category. Uh, though 2020 tempered growth, as is the case of almost every firm, we were able to register areas that partially offset the dip, such as our soju category. Cognizant of the strength of the Halley wave, we were able to capitalize on its popularity in order to develop the Ginro brand amidst the lockdowns. And for the first half of 2021, recovery is well underway with our net sales growing by 35% versus the same period of last year. And this is in spite of the continuing effects of the lockdown. The gross profits ra uh, profit rates from 2018 to the first half of 2021 has shown increasing trends. The increasing gross profit rate is indicative of the group's well-managed product pricing and the strong control over its costs. Our operating margins are likewise on an uptrend due to the careful planning of our marketing and the promotional activities. And in terms of our net income from 2019 to 2020, the bottom line decrease was uh, minimized due to the successful implementation of efficiency measures. Our consolidated net income for the first six months of 2021 posted a stellar growth of 75% at 700 million compared to the same period of last year, which was at around 400 million. The improvement was due to the increased sales coupled with the operating efficiencies uh, we realized during the period. Next slide, please. Okay. So for the financial position, the total assets of the group stood at 8.6 billion as of June 30, 2021. And as a trading company, we employ an asset light model. Outsourcing of our logistical needs are mainly to reliable and trusted supply chain and freight companies. Our liabilities are very low at 1.5 billion. Our resulting current ratio is at a very healthy level of 6.4 times ensuring that liquidity risk is mini minimized, especially during these times. And historically, we have, we have always been very conservative in availing uh, debt financing facilities. Our very low gearing of 0.20 times is a testament to that. And this has made us resilient and is benefiting us now as we position ourselves to aggressively expand along with a recovering economy. And our ROE, the return on equity, although was tempered by the pandemic, was maintained at a healthy 19.7% last year, 2020, at par with the 2018 levels. And for 2021, we are confident that the narrative will be consistent as we approach the seasonal increase of our business leading to the Christmas season. And we will continue to be prudent in the management of our financial position. And we believe that the follow-on offer would allow us to do that as we implement an aggressive expansion strategy. Uh, that's it for the financial highlights. I turn you over again to Sir JP to discuss further the use of this. Thank you, Sir JP. On the screen are our strategic plan to maximize the use of proceeds from the follow-on offering to create more value for our shareholders. Approximately 3.5 billion of the net proceeds will be used to fund potential acquisitions for the next two years. In order to accelerate expansion, the company intends to acquire other liquor businesses that have a strategic fit to the current operations. 500 million will be used to fund number one, the development, incubation, and launch of new products. And number two, the expansion of the group's distribution channels. 300 million will be used to develop and expand the capacity of our existing warehousing and distribution facilities, as well as to fund our logistics modernization program of the same facilities. And finally, 57 million is allotted for working capital. To provide more flavor, with what we have just discussed, the group has the capacity to acquire companies that are strategic fit to its business in the next two years. This may be in the form of acquiring similar companies that are strong in marketing and distribution or look at opportunities either further up or down the supply chain. We seek to further enhance 
and expand our product portfolio. We are on the seeking of potential brands from existing and potential principles that we believe we can develop for the Philippine market. As discussed earlier, we also have identified gaps in our portfolio. And to fill in these gaps, we will replicate in these segments what Alfonso was in the spirits market. We will also strengthen our presence in the non-alcoholic beverage industry. We will expand into alternative distribution channels and new customer touch point frontiers. Firstly, we will strengthen our existing business to business channel by implementing more efficient processes, adapting new technology and further increasing our partnerships with sub distributors. At the same time, we will also explore a business to consumer model by foreign into e-commerce platforms. That wraps up our short presentation. Mm -hmm.